<laughs> All right. We give thanks for this Sunday morning. We give thanks for this time for us to spend together, um, to commune together. We speak that in this time, a word will be spoken that is perfect for all of us. May it be resonant with our spirits. May it shed light, give guidance as we continue on our journey. May the meditation be powerful for us. May we leave this session encouraged, inspired, grateful, with a light heart. We speak that it is already so, and we give thanks. Ashe, 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 oh, amen. I mean, I mean, I mean. All right, so um, when I was, you know, one of the things that I remember from my church days um, is when we would do, I think this is when we would do communion. We would, before we did communion, we would read the church covenant. And one of the lines of the church covenant was, we will always, uh, um, I, I will always be, um, I think it was slow to take offense, slow to take offense and always ready for reconciliation. I remember that so clearly slow to take offense and always ready for reconciliation. Anyone remember, anyone experienced uh, the church covenant in their, in their church? Is that familiar to you? It's a common church covenant. I'm looking it up right now to see if I can pull it up and read it. Janitha said, I remember that. Yeah, we had a big poster framed <laughs> on our church um, wall and we read it every, I want to say it was every first Sunday. Okay, see, I got my church folks in here. You know what I'm saying? So listen, these things have such significance. I really encourage you, you know, and I'm going to say this because I know that this ministry uh, is reaching a lot of people around the world, different uh, backgrounds, um, especially because of it, of ours, these segments being placed on YouTube. I want to always give the disclaimer that I ask you to keep your mind open, be slow to judge what you're hearing, um, trust that the Most High has uh, led you to this video for a reason, and so be open as I speak, because I speak a lot about church and my language can sound like, maybe, that I'm speaking against church. And what I always wanna make clear is that I'm not speaking against church. What I'm acknowledging is something that many may not find the courage enough to acknowledge is that the church culture uh, had quite a few deficits. It breeded quite a few counterproductive behaviors, thought processes, thought patterns. Okay, I'm not mad at it. I feel that we all do the best that we can and we do what we know. We do what we feel we know. But I do feel like when you begin to know better, you should do better. When you begin to know truth, you should begin to speak truth and you should begin to look for more truth and be open for more truth. Part of that truth is there was much um, beauty and truth and um, significance in many of the things that we explored like the Bible, these covenants, all of these different types of things, but we may not have thought about them in a deeper aspect. So my desire, goal, if you will, is to speak about these things. When it comes to my mind, I give thanks that church, the church culture was a part of my experience. Uh, it's a big part of my life. It's a big part of this ministry. <laughs> I give thanks for it. It gives me that's my foundation. So it gives me a foundation to stand on as God reveals truth to me. And so as I tap into that foundation, I start to realize that it's a lot of essence in the hymns, in the, in the scriptures, in the prayers, in the rituals, in the covenants, and all of these different things. 
<clears throat> and so the whole goal of OU Ministries, one of the main goals is for us to explore those things because um, I'm pretty positive that a high percentage of us who even who are even tuned in right now, Christianity which, and church culture and churching was your background as well. Whether it was as much as it, you know, if whether it was a lot where you were, you were literally like the church child or the preacher's kid or something like that, or you just definitely have a memory of church in your uh, memory bank. It was a part of your life. And I believe that everything is meant, you know, all is God. And so to dismiss something, um, I think it, it, get, it could put you at a disadvantage of not seeing something that the most high wants you to see. Okay. So I felt compelled to give that disclaimer, so to say, to let, to just continue to emphasize. I'm not one that's against any religion. I'm not against any, I'm not against anything. I strive my best not to be against anything. <laughs> I'm just for truth. <laughs> that covers everything. I'm just going to be for truth. I'm not going to be against. So if, you know, if I come and I'm, I'm, I meet uh, someone who practice Hindu or Buddhism or, you know, whatever, you know, Islam, whatever you, you know, tell me, I, I would love to hear the truth. I would love to hear how truth um, is translated through this religion. Uh, let me let me hear that. I'm for truth. Let us hear the truth of it. So I thought about, um, it came to my mind this morning as I was thinking about inner peace, as I was reflecting on um, how to attain that inner peace, not attain it, how to um, align with it because it's there. It's just that we get caught up outside of ourselves. And so we feel disconnected from our inner peace, but we are always connected to it because that, and that's why when we are not feeling at peace or when we are not, you know, feeling aligned, it bothers us. That's because that inner peace is always there calling us back, calling us back to it, you know, <laughs> calling us back to that peace because that peace is our natural state of, of, of being, you know? And so when you come out of that peace, then you're moving into an unnatural state of being, a natural state of being. So I was thinking about that and something popped up in my head from this covenant and it says, be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation. So this is the church covenant. I'm just gonna read it. Uh, it says, having been led as we believe by the spirit of God, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our savior. And on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels and this assembly, that wasn't in our covenant, it was in the presence of God, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage therefore by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of this ministry, the expenses of the church and the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectfully in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our department, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to obtain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our effort to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our savior to secure it without delay. We more over engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. That was the covenant that we would state 
every first Sunday. So what I want to highlight here is so much in this that um, there's so much in this. <laughs> if we were to translate this in a fifth dimensional way, it would be a beautiful covenant that we would have with the true metaphysical church, which um, if you look up the metaphysical meaning of church, this is what we find. Remembering that the church is not just this, this covenant is of course, you know, having people to create a covenant with the physical church they're in. But if we were to look at, I just suggest we look at all things that we did and indulged in and explored uh, and see what it means to you as you look at it with a different eye and listen to it with a different ear. I, that's a great challenge. If you are one that's familiar with different um, hymns and scriptures, look at it now from a different eye, you know, with, with your mind's eye, with your God eye, your first eye and see what it means to you. The metaphysical meaning of church is the, it says the true Christ church is not an outer sect or religious, religious denomination. First of all, it is an aggregation of spiritual ideas in individual consciousness. Rewind. It is, first of all, it is an aggregation of spiritual ideas in individual consciousness to establish the church of God in man, a new state of consciousness must be formed. Man must gain an understanding of God as spirit and also must understand his own relation to spirit. This is revealed by the Holy Ghost, which is an epit uh, epitome of divine mind projected into human consciousness. This is revealed by the Holy Ghost, which is an epitome of divine mind projected into human consciousness. The church of God begins its activity in man as a mental perception, which must go through certain processes before it, establish, it is established in the whole consciousness. Its work is subjective first, that is, it is a silent interior planting of spiritual ideas, which do not make themselves manifest at once, but work like leaven and in time transforms the individual. In its outer sense, the church of Christ consists of all persons in whom the consciousness of truth has become firmly established. Ashe. Whether or not they belong to a denominational church makes no difference. They comprise that great brotherhood which, with G, which Jesus Christ, divine mind, established in spirit. Men have read the Bible in the letter instead of the spirit and their different interpretations of the scriptures together with their adherence to forms and creeds are the cause of the varying sects or church, church churches of today. The true church is not made of creeds and forms, nor is it contained in walls of wood and stone. The heart of man is its temple and the spirit of truth is the one who guides, who guide into all truth. When men learn to turn within the spirit of truth, who is in each one for his light and inspiration, the differences between the churches of man will be eliminated and the one church will be recognized. Ashe, 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 oh, amen. I mean, give thanks. We give thanks. We, we pray that we will, we will realize as people are beginning to feel like they miss church and they, 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 you know, I'm saying this because in 2020, church is shut down. This, this culture, church culture took a big hit, so to say, for the lack of better words. And now people are feeling it. They miss, they like, I, I miss it. This was a part of me. It was feeding me in some way, shape or form. I'm feeling like I miss it. I'm feeling like I miss it. May we learn, see, be revealed clearly what church truly is.
what church truly is. First of all, it's an aggregation of spiritual ideas in individual consciousness. Why did I bring this up? In relation to the covenant that I read, slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation. I feel that one of the first, mm, I won't say first, one of the things that can help us to begin to aggregate these spiritual ideas in our consciousness is we must be slow to take offense and be always ready for reconciliation. Not with just our fellow man, but with life. Many times we are so quick to be offended as if you are you like that. As if you are you like that. Just so quick to be offended. They cut me off in traffic. They, what, if that, what if that cut off stopped you from an accident? She taking so long to ring me up. What if you were supposed to be present in the moment to be able to share a word with that sister or that brother. We're so quick to take offense. So let's look at reconciliation, okay? Let's look at the definition of reconciliation. It says the restoration of friendly relations. The action of making one view or belief compatible with another. Let's keep looking. And then thirdly, the action of making financial accounts consistent, or look at this word they use, harmonization, reconciliation, harmonization. Let's look at that synonym of reconciliation, the harmony, the harmonization, okay? Let's look at harmony, the metaphysical meaning of harmony. This is something you hear called for a lot in scripture or in the word. Listen to what divine harmony means. Perfect accord with the goodness, the beauty and the righteousness of omnipresent spirit. Y'all all have my computer. We're working from my iPad today because you know I have it up on the screen. But I'm reading from truthunity.com. That's where I get my metaphysical uh, translation from. Um, Truth Unity, T R U T H unity.com. If somebody can put it in the chat, that'll be amazing. But if you put it in Google, you just type in harmony truth unity and you get the metaphysical meaning i just wanted to pause for the cause and, and take that as a teachable moment so anyone who maybe want to be familiar with the metaphysical translation of things uh which i think is essential because listen the word did you know thesaurus means treasury <laughs> our treasury our treasures our gifts, our magic, our, the spells, all of that is in the word, understanding the word. So I'm taking this, what we used to say every first Sunday, but we were talking about a physical church. I'm translating it to the spiritual church, the true metaphysical church, the real church. That's what's most important. I give thanks for my fellow sisters and my fellow brothers, but I don't, I care more about spirit and I see you more as spirit. And I'm more so concerned about my relationship with spirit. And as I'm concerned about my relationship with spirit, if you are involved at all, then I'm connected with you from a heartical spiritual standpoint. So my desire is to understand this life from a spiritual standpoint, period. So we give thanks for different covenants to help us to try to relate with each other and all of those different types of things. But what's the most important 
is your relationship with spirit. Because if you seek ye first the kingdom of God, all these other things, good relationships, your money, your health, all of these different things shall be added unto you, period. You don't have to worry about all that. You don't have to be sitting around judging folks. And I wonder, are they truthful? And are they loyal? And do they this? And do they that? You will have a divine protection over your life. You will begin to experience divine connections. You won't have to make no efforts. It will be easy. You will begin to attract the right people, places, and things in your life. You don't have to be going through all of that. You don't have to be stating the covenant to, to remind you to be faithful to the church and faithful to this and faithful to that. It will become natural. If it's a part of your connection, that will be, become a natural thing for you to do. You don't have to be reminded. You don't have to be. It's just a natural thing that will come because it will manifest from the core of you. Your physical world will be a mirror of your inner world. So you don't have to be concerned with these things on the outer. This is why it's essential for us to understand the church, the true church. Your heart is your temple. And your heart is the center of your consciousness. The center of your consciousness. This is why I say lighten your heart as much as possible. Purify your heart as much as possible. Feed the heart. Speak to the heart. Love on the heart as much as possible. Protect the heart. People don't know what that means metaphysically. It's a scripture that says, uh, that says, and I'm paraphrasing, above all things, protect your heart. It's not talking about this carnal way we think about protecting the heart. If the heart is your temple, anything that you put in the temple, whether that be what you're listening to, what you're eating, what you, how you're living your life, what you're around, all that stuff is feeding your, it's, it's, it's impacting your temple. It's impacting your heart. The more, the more positive, life-giving words you hear, it's feeding your heart, your center of consciousness. The more you're around loving, kind, harmonizing people and things, the more you do things that bring you joy, serenity, peace. The more you eat and ingest live foods, live drinks, all the way around, the more you see Beautiful things. That's why sitting in nature can lighten your heart. And even you will start having downloads just by sitting now watching a waterfall or observing the garden. All type of downloads will start to happen. Your heart, the center of your consciousness, is essential for you to keep it light, keep it pure. And so when I hear this word, be slow to take offense and always ready for reconciliation, what I'm hearing is I'm not going to be so attached to life or be controlling in life, stepping on them controlling spirits today, trying to be so controlling. You're so quick to judge. You're so quick to take offense. You're so quick to, and it could be, it could be, you could feel like it's righteous. I should have did that better. I, I knew better. I did this. I did that. Taking offense to yourself. Be slow to judge. Be slow to take offense. And always be ready for reconciliation. To harmonize. Always be ready to harmonize. Listen to divine harmony. One more time. Perfect accord. Listen to that. Perfect accord with the goodness the beauty and the righteousness of omnipresent spirit. Perfect accord with it. Accord. To give or grant someone power, status, or recognition. I'm going to give power to the goodness, beauty, and righteousness of ever-present, always here, always working spirit. That's how I'm going to tap into my harmony. I'm going to acknowledge that in every situation, every circumstance, 
Spirit is at work. And so that's going to help harmonize my thoughts, harmonize, harmonize my emotions, because I'm going to affirm to myself that goodness, beauty, and righteousness of omnipresent spirit is truth, is the reality. That is the reality. That's how we get, that's how we, that's how we can stay in harmony. Because as the brother mentioned earlier, I believe the brother mentioned knee-jerk reactions. If we get caught up in knee-jerk reactions, we will be quick to take offense and hard and, and hardly ever ready for reconciliation. You become hard-hearted, you become hard-minded. And then God is, God, can, you can't see it. You can't see God in things. And oh, what a, what, what a sad thing to, to miss is the presence of God in your life and in your situations. Do we hear the word today? The word is, the word, be slow to take offense and always be ready for reconciliation. The harmonization of thoughts. If you can do that, then you don't have to worry about the reconciliation of physical relationships, of earthly relationships. Because when you, when you, before you take offense by somebody, before you take offense and start holding on to something it, uh, offensively in situations and circumstances, you do the work to release it, renunciate, reconcile in the mind, you will see problems don't even arise. You'll see these struggles you've had with family and friends and, 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 and stoic is the word. These troubles you've had with supervisors and this and that and all, it will start fizzling away. Like, oh, God, I'm not worried about that. Well, you know, you be careful because, you know, you don't want people to start thinking they can take advantage of you. But like, my God is a good God. Let me tell you, <laughs> they can think that they can. That's fine. <laughs> I, that's that's a them problem. That's not a me problem. I, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't want to have anything to do with that. Let that be their journey. That's not my journey. It don't apply to me. It ain't got nothing to do with me. <laughs> As for me and my house, me and my temple, the goodness, beauty, and righteousness of spirit is always present in every circumstance and situation, no matter what it looked like. Ashe. So it's no need for me to try to handle the situation, chase it down and beat it down. No. Does it mean that spirit won't lead you to do certain things, say certain things? No, you may be led to do certain things, say certain things, but your heart will be pure. You will be in a place of harmony. You won't be speaking with a bitter tongue. You won't be speaking from a fearful place or egoic, prideful place. You will be speaking from God's confidence. And that light is different than a nice, nasty email. It's different from that nice, nasty text. It's different from that nice, nasty phone call, that passive progressive knee-jerk reaction. It's different from that. It's a light. And that light is meant to be present in that moment. It teaches. It teaches you, it teaches them, it gives room for God to work. So you want to reconcile your relationships that you may have, that you feel like you want you them to be better relationships, whether that's with yourself or other people or things, then harmonize, be slow to take offense and always ready for reconciliation. Not for the moral sake of it, not because that's the good thing to do, but because according to truth, that's the position, that's the posture you should be taking anyway. Because according to truth, all is God, so all is good. And the goodness, beauty and righteousness of spirit is always present. 
in and through situations. And it's alive in me. And it is, ex, ex, is a, it expresses itself through me as me. So when I show up in situations, when I so, show up in circumstances, I'm showing up as an expression of the presence of God, which is good, beautiful, and righteous. Ashe? Ashe, that's good. That's good. <laughs> that's good. That is good. That is good. All right. Let's get some meditation going before I have to go. Because y'all know I can go for him. I can go for him. If you heard a word, if it inspired you today, if it inspired you today, if something was said that inspired you today, say Ashe, say amen, say I mean, whichever one can seal up the word for you. Uh, whatever you, namaste, or however you can seal it today period with a T, however it feels it for you. <laughs> if it was a word said today that inspired you, that was for you, say I say, man, I mean, or whatever seals it for you. Take it with your, in your heart. Let it sit with you. Hear my voice prayerfully. Hear the voice of spirit in your ears as you walk this land, as you, as you do what you do. Be slow to take offense and ready for reconciliation. Lord, may I be slow to take offense and ready to be, ready to be ready for reconciliation in this meeting. My God, allow me to be slow to take offense and ready for reconciliation in this, at this dinner, at this meeting, at this, in this call, at work today, at, in this drive, whatever. Keep it as your prayer, your heart's prayer. May I be slow to take offense and always ready for reconciliation, always ready for harmony, always ready to give God room to work and show me God, show me goodness, show me beauty, show me righteousness, always ready to see it. Let that be your heart's prayer and you will start seeing it. It's amazing. It's a magical thing to experience life with even those things we call downs or valleys can feel so bright and so light. It's, it's, I imagine it's like that fire pit where, where, where they were in the fire pit and wasn't being touched by the fire. That's how you become. <laughs> That's how you become. Will things come? Yes. Will the ego pop up and these thoughts come and you have to, yes. You keep your position. Slow to take offense. Not just offended by people work with slow to judge or even a thought slow to be offended by a thought call that it proclaim it or or move it out your consciousness using your words i oftentimes say mom we're not doing that nope we're not doing that and then i proclaim truth we're not doing that Everything, I was having a conversation with myself this morning. You know, everything is meant. Every single thing that has happened in your life is meant. And so if you offended by something, if you feel some type of way, that's a you problem. <laughs> Get it together. <laughs> these are the conversations I have with myself. I was having it this morning with myself. Because these little, these little error thoughts pop up in your head about certain situations and certain people and certain things. You know, you can see it's, I see it. I see everything happen. I see it. And it comes to my awareness for a reason and it's not coming to my awareness for me to take offense. This is just uh, shush, shush, be quiet. I'm trying to show you something. I didn't bring this up in your consciousness for you to judge and take offense. So be quiet. I'm trying to show you something. Be quiet so you can see. Be quiet so you can hear. And sure enough, I had that conversation with myself this morning. And sure enough, something was revealed to me that I was, uh, that was a blind spot. And give thanks. Because it was right before my prayer meditations this morning. And so I was able to focus my energy during my prayer meditation in that space, in that character. In that character, I won't call it flaw, but that, that, that space and character that needed a little, little uh, massaging, <laughs> refining. Give thanks. So glad I did. So I can reach into it. 
But if I got caught up in ego, oh, hit the mind go. The mind start making up all type of stuff. I ain't doing it. <laughs> I ain't gonna do it. Give thanks. These things happen for us to either learn. It's, it's gonna be a lesson and or a blessing. It's not there to offend you. It's not there for you to hold on in bitterness, resentment, shame, guilt, fear, none of that. It's not meant. So if you start feeling it, I can tell you right now, it ain't meant for you to go that route. So stop it. Stop it. And take your position as the one who is slow to take offense and ready for reconciliation. I say, let's get some meditation in. We're going to set the intention for this meditation to render us lighthearted in a space of openness where we are always slow to take offense and ready for reconciliation in our minds and in our hearts. That expressed within us manifests as a light heart, an open mind, and a free spirit. So I speak that we can tap into that lightheartedness, open-mindedness, and free spiritness as we go into this meditation. We give thanks in advance, Ashe. All right, so find yourself in a comfortable position. You don't have to see me, but you do need to hear me. We give thanks for the word this morning. Please do, if you can, stay until the end of the session. We give thanks for the stirring of the soul, the speaking to the heart that has happened this morning. We're going into a moment of meditation, relaxing the body, relaxing the mind, allowing the word that we receive today to resonate in our hearts, to know that it's not something that we must make an effort to do, but something that we are just to allow ourselves to do and be. And many times that allowance comes when you lighten the heart, open the mind and free the spirit. Let's just start with inhaling deeply through the nose, slowing down the breath, expanding the body and exhaling slowly and completely. Inhaling deeply and slowly, expanding the chest. And exhale slowly and completely, relaxing the body, relaxing the shoulders, the arms, fully relax. Letting go of all tension as you continue to inhale and exhale slow as you can, slowing down the breath, slowing down the heart rate. Opening the heart, lightening the heart, opening the mind, breaking up all the tension that may be stored in the head space, in the shoulders, in the joints. Allowing that breath to expand and relax the body. As you do that, release the thought. Focus on the breath. Bring your mind to the body. Feeling yourself totally relaxed, holding on to nothing. As you continue to inhale and exhale and relax, affirm within yourself that you are a light being. I am a light being. 
I come into this physical experience as pure positive energy. I come into this physical experience with a divine plan over my life. And although I am a co-creator in the process, a conscious being with choices, with the power to choose, the power to make decisions, the plan is still divine and is still in place. So I affirm that I will be slow to judge, slow to take offense, and always ready to see God, seek God in every circumstance and situation. I release the desire to control everything, to know everything, to figure, force, and fight. I allow spirit to move in my life, even if it doesn't look like I feel it should or sound like I feel it should. I will be faithful in my steadfastness and truth in the truth that everything is always calibrating in our favor. I will be in one accord with the beauty, goodness, and righteousness of this omnipresent spirit. I will allow that to be my truth, that as the presence of God is in me, and it is flowing through me, expressing itself through me, as me, that the perfect plan is always at play. I will allow myself to be lighthearted and open-minded so that spirit can speak to me, help move me, help heal me, help make me whole when I feel apart. And I will be willing and ready to obey spirit, courageously, brazenly bold, knowing that spirit is good and beautiful and righteous in my life. This is the truth I choose to stand on. I choose it in the face of struggle. I choose it in the face of my own very fears. I choose it in the face of my ego. I choose truth. That this life is not me like that. This life is not mine like that. This life is a part of a divine plan, an eternal plan, an infinite plan that includes dormant potentiality, eternity, infinity, abundance, peace, flow. I align with this flow. I allow peace, serenity, and harmony in my life. I affirm right now every circumstance and situation that I find myself in right now and going forward. I affirm that everything is working out in the favor of my greatest good, by grace and in a perfect way. Ashe. Take a deep breath in through the nose. This time, hold that breath. And release. Let's do that two more times. Deep breath in through the nose. Hold that breath. And release. And one more time, deep breath in. Hold that breath. And release. Ashe. We close out. Bring yourself back, back to this present moment. Maybe by wiggling your fingers and toes, giving yourself a little stretch. And we'll get ready to close with the word from Baba Muji. It tends to always be a perfect word. Giving thanks for that meditation, praying that you have experienced a lightening of heart, clearing of mind and reconnection with spirit, 
recommitment to spirit, remembrance of spirit in a genuine way. Check. All right. Give thanks, give thanks. Thank you all for staying put. I do post these on YouTube. All of my Sunday meditations are on fellowships and meditation on YouTube. Thank you for asking, Sister. Thank you for joining me this morning, Sister. Welcome. I don't know if this is your first time joining, but we welcome you. To all of my first timers, I'm not sure if you're first timers. Let me know if you are. We want to welcome you to our Sunday fellowship. All right. If you have the book, White Fire by our Baba Muji. It's on the what I'm reading is on page 178. And um, I'm wondering, hold on, is this one? Okay, we're gonna do one more flip, flip, because I think that's like a four page. <laughs> we're gonna do the second flip. That was a four page or one. So, okay, it's been giving thanks for the amazing bro. I shake him. All right. Mm. All right, we're on page 107. Page 107, passage 217. Page 107, passage 217. White Fire by Muji. It reads, remaining as awareness, delusions fall away and mind returns to its natural abode, the heart. Do not fight any tendency. Simply stay as the detached witness who is ever present and without form. Follow this advice. It works. <laughs> One more time. Remaining as awareness, delusions fall away. And mind returns to its natural abode, the heart. Do not fight any tendencies. Simply stay as the detached witness who is ever present and without form. Be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation. Follow this advice. It works. <laughs> I say, give thanks. Wasn't that a perfect word? We just talked about how staying in the heart is essential. Staying in the heart is essential. We give thanks for the word. We give thanks for the word. Shay. Shay, Shay, oh, amen. I mean, I mean, I thought I heard somebody at the door. Sorry, y'all. Y'all know we in open hours now. So we give thanks for the word, the meditation, this AM. I pray that it was resonant to your soul. I pray that it spoke to you in a perfect way. <laughs> yes, don't take it personal. Like our sister Monica say, don't take it personal. <laughs> Taking it personal is not the way to go. I got like three cars out here, y'all. I'll be out here just vibing away. Greetings. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> I heard y'all, yes, yes. <laughs> No watermelon this weekend. No watermelon this weekend. Okay. You're my assistant today. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, sister. Closing out my meditations. But I'm closing, literally. All right, y'all. We at the marketplace today. So if you want to come through, you can come through. Thank you so much for joining. Um, if you watch this on YouTube and you found that it was impactful for you, as I always say, please do share, share, share. If you feel like somebody needed to hear this word, Share with that person, send a link. Also, if you'd like to support OU Ministries or um, show some love to your sister,
the link that you went to in order to join this call, you can go back to that link. There are three ways that you can choose from to support, uh, to show your love. Thank you so much for the offerings that uh, a few of you all sent earlier, <laughs> going towards the computer fund. Thank you, <laughs> but give thanks. So um, you can go on that page on the website, the Sunday Fellowship page, and you can give your gift there. Um, if you're watching this via YouTube, you will see a link down here in the caption where you can show your love to the ministry um, through that way. I thank you so much for always showing your love and support to OU Ministries. I pray that you can be, uh, experience a fruitful, thoughtful, mindful, aware week this week, a week of not being quick to judge or take offense, but being ready for reconciliation and harmony and all of your experiences so that you're able to see the goodness and see the God as God moves in your circumstances and situations. We give thanks, we give thanks. I shall give thanks you all for joining. See you all next Sunday, prayerfully.